So this is question number three of the 2004 International Linguistics Olympiad. It says, consider 14 Latin words and their English translations. So we have the word um, barba, which is beard, divided, which is he divides, or fumus, which is smoke, fracas, which is sediment, fovere, which is um, to heat, um, mandere, which is to chew, werbum, a word, um, widower, a widow, mordax, biting, glabra, hairless, flax, sickle, rubrica, red paint, um, mediocris, moderate, fingo, I sculpt. We're told that linguists believe that in ancient times all these words except one contained the aspirated D sound, the. Later, the was replaced by other sounds. Consider the four English word, words cognate to four of the Latin words given above. Beard, widow, word and red. Assignment one. Indicate the Latin word of the above list that never contained the the sound. Explain your solution. So we have, we're given three, sorry, we're given four words. Beard, widow, word and red. And we're told they're cognate to the words, to four the words given below. So beard is, beard comes from barber. Widow comes from a uh, widower. Word comes from werbum. And red comes from rubrica. So I'll highlight um, the Latin words um, to which these um, four English words are cognate. I'll, I'll highlight them in the table. So we have barber, um, werbum, widower, and rubrica. So um, a good thing to note is that each of these four English words that we're given contain a D. Um, so beard ends in a D, widow has a D there, word ends in a D and red ends in a D. So um, it would be reasonable to assume that these D, these Ds in the English words um, are derived from the aspirated D that existed in ancient times. So um, looking to see whereabouts in these in the Latin um, these were these Ds in the English um, correspond to. We can see that um, a widower has a D here in uh, the exact same kind of pos position as in um, widow, so um, the first letter of the second syllable. Um, for Werbum, we have a B here. For rubrica we also have a B and for barber we have a B. So we have three Bs and um, one D. So it would be reasonable to assume from there that um, the aspirated D sound um, changed in ancient times from uh, into either a B or a D depending on the word. So let's look at the table to see if we can um, if we can highlight where we have um, a B um, that has evolved from the the sound and where we have a D that's evolved from the sound and I'll mark those off. I'll have, a, I'll put a D, so a little D here like such, where um, we have the case like a uh, widower where um, the aspirated D has basically become an unaspirated D, it's lost its aspiration and I will put a B next to the cases where the aspirated D has become a B. For widower, of course, we have a D here. Um, for uh, Mordax as well, we have a D. Um, for Mediocris, we have a D. For Mandere, we have a D. Um, for Dividit, we have a D. And Let's see where we have a B. So for Barber, we have a B. For um, Werbum, we have a B. For um, Glabra, we have a B. For Rubrica, we have a B. 
at what's left. So let's look, let's highlight what we have left that we haven't been able to group in one of those two rules, it either being a D or a B that um, evolved from the aspirated D sound. So we have fumus, fraques, fovere, flax, and fingo. So immediately you can see that what's similar with these five words is that they all begin with an F. And remember we're told that um, in the question that there's uh, exact one word, Latin word in the above list that never contained the aspirated D sound. So um, from that we can, and we have five here, so I think we can conclude that um, perhaps in the case where the aspirated D began at the beginning of the word, it changed into an F. So we have, so let's write that down in fact as our first rule. Um, at the beginning of At the beginning of a word, the the sound, the the sound became a um, an F. And uh, what we're going to have as our second rule, um, where it occurred, um, the, there were other cases where the um, D H, where it occurred not at the beginning, so not at beginning um d the the sound turned into just um an unaspirated d and our third rule is going to be the one where the the sound became a b so but how are you going to distinguish between the the sound becoming a just a d and it becoming a b so there's another pattern that we have to spot here. So let's first consider the um the bees. So we have where we have we have barba, werbum, rubrica, um, and we have glabra. I'm gonna highlight all. I'm gonna highlight these all in um this purple, and then I'm going to kind of cross out the video, and I'm gonna find um I'm gonna probably highlight it using green just so we can distinguish between the rules. So let's call the first rule um, the orange rule, um, the second rule, and that's the rule for the Fs, so where it beget, where the, the sound um, was at the beginning of the word. I'm gonna call this um, second rule, which is to do with uh, the, the, D lo the D losing its aspiration. I'm gonna call the, 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 second, the second rule the green rule, and the third rule will be the purple rule, which is about the aspirated D turning into a B. So we can see that where it turned into, where the aspirated D turned into a B, um, we either have the B um, follows um, an R. So in the case of uh, Werbum and uh, Barba, the B follows um, an R, a letter R. And in the in for Glabra and Rubrica, um, uh, the B precedes an R. So the aspirated D turned into a B where it, um, where the DH, um, follows or precedes, I hope you can read this, an R. So that means that, um, where you don't have, in the case where you neither have um, number one or number three, so in every other case, uh, you simply have um, number two occurring. So that must mean that um, there must, it must be one of the, one of the Ds, one of the words where, which I'm going to highlight in green just now, from Vidua, Mordax, uh, Mediocris, Mandere, and Dividit, where the rule the rule's been broken. So let's first check let's first check divide it. So it's this D, it's the second D that's in question, not the first D. If it had been the first D in question and there had been no other ones, this would be the odd one out, since that should have been an F and it wouldn't have followed the rules. So it looks like this one is fine. Um Mandere, um this also looks like it's fine because um it's in the middle of the word, not at the beginning, the D in question here. And um it's not it does not follow or precede um, an R, so that seems to work nicely. Um, mediocris, 
Um, again, this seems to work nicely just in the case of Mandere. Uh, on either side, it doesn't have an R, and it's not at the beginning of the word, so this seems to be correct. Um, let's look now at Mordax. It seems for Mordax that um, there's an R directly before the D in Mordax, so here. So that so the rule fails here, because if you have an R following or preceding um, the D, then you should really have a B. It, it's this rule here, number three, with the B. So... Um, Mordax seems to be the odd one out. Um, Mordax in ancient times would never have had an aspirated D. So the answer to assignment one is um, Mordax. Um, and just to double check, Vidua. Um, Vidua works fine. There's not an R on either end of the Ds and the D is not um, at the beginning of the word. So that works fine. So the answer to assignment one is Mordax. Let's move on to assignment two. Assignment two says, consider six more Latin words. Brevis, short. Frigus, cold. Combretum, read. Gerdus, silly. Under, wave. And debeo, I o. Which of these words are sure to have contained the the sound and why? So, um... We've already written up rules, so rules 1, 2, and 3. Well, the rules for how the aspirated D turned into an F, a D, or a B. And um, we can use that in this um, to answer this question. So um, I should probably add to rule 2. The DH, uh, sorry, the um, aspirated D turns into a D when um, the uh, aspirate, aspirated D is not at the beginning of the word and doesn't have an R on either end, on either end. So no R. I'm just going to write, and that means no R on either end. So um, from that, let's look first at um, Bravis. Um, immediately, we can see from Bravis that this does not. Um, so we know that it's either a B, a D, or an F, um, which corresponds to what in ancient times would be an aspirated. Um, uh, an aspirated D. We know that, therefore, the only one we can consider for the for um which could have evolved from the aspirated D is the B. Only the B is at the beginning of the word. Um, and if the if the aspirated D sound had been at the beginning of the word, it would have evolved into an F. So we know that bravest for sure would not have um contained the aspirated D in ancient times. Um, the next one we have is frigus. Um, for frigus, um, it we have an F, and that's at the beginning of the word, so um, that means that in ancient times, that's fine, that passes the test, even though there is an R next to it, it it's at the, the F is at the beginning of the word, so that works out fine, um, and that is a definitely a contender, it, it could have contained the um, aspirated D in ancient times. The next one we have is um, combretum, um, combretum we have the B, so we're looking at the B and to look to see if the B fits the rules. So um, the B is not at the beginning, it's in the middle. Um, it also has an R, um, it also has an R right after it. So it it um, it fits with rule rule number three, so that's fine. That could that that is the, that is um a word which could have contained the aspirated D sound. Um the next one we have is uh Gerdus. So um for Gerdus, we have a similar issue that we had with Mordax, where we have an R um, before the D, which means that it doesn't fit the rule. It doesn't fit rule two. It would have, if it, you'd have had an, if you have an R after it, then it would have to have been something like Gerbus for it to um, have contained an aspirated D in ancient times. Obviously, that's not the case. It breaks the three rules that we defined earlier, so that's a no. Um, it could not have contained the aspirated D sound. Um, the next one we have is under. Um, under has a D, and the D seems to fit rule number two because it's not at the beginning of the word, and it does not um, follow or precede an R, so that's a tick. Um, under could have contained the aspirated D in ancient times. Um, the last one we have is uh, Debeo. So in Debeo, we have both a D and a B. Let's first start with the D. Um, the D does, so because we have both a D and a B, we have um, two chances to be right. That means that it could have been either D 
the um was previously an aspirated um d in uh ancient times and just lost its aspiration or it could have been the b that was an aspirated d in ancient times and evolved into a b um looking at the d it's at the beginning of a word which means that it does not fit um the rule for an aspirated d becoming an unaspirated d so um no for the d looking at the b the b has um two e's at either end so there's no r there so it does not fit rule number three so that means no um debeo um could not have contained the the sound in ancient times so that is problem number three completed